On today's show, it's the most fun NBA show of your week. We got the trade deadline today. And Big Dave and myself have a rumor for every single NBA team. What's your team doing? We're going to tell you what they could possibly do on today's Locked On NBA. We got no time to waste. Let's go. You are Locked On NBA, your daily NBA podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome. You are locked on to the NBA. My name is Nick Engstead, host of the Locked On Mavericks podcast. Thanks for making Locked On NBA your first listen every single day. We are free and available on all platforms, including YouTube, where you can subscribe right now. We just got to 4,000 subs. Thanks to everybody that subscribed to the channel. And you'll want to stick around later today because we have a live NBA trade deadline show with John Floyd from the Locked On Fantasy, John Corrales from Locked On Celtics. And produced by me, we're going to have all kinds of trade deadline stuff to talk about. So check all that out. Also, today's episode is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online is covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online, where the game starts. And joining me, as always, my co host on a Thursday of Lockdown NBA, host of Lockdown Bulls. What you got for me, Big Dave? I have a question for you. Have you worn anything else other than Bengals attire since they've gone to the Super Bowl, man? Seriously. Who they? Who they? Who they think? <laughs> not me. I don't think. <laughs> I'm not mad Nobody. at you, man. I'm not mad no, at you. I got yeah. the Bengals winning, too, by the way. Ooh, I'm feeling good about that. <laughs> yeah. I'm feeling good about that. I, I'm just glad to be here. <laughs> 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 All right. We got no time. Big day. We got no time to waste. We're going through every single NBA team. We got a rumor for every single NBA team because we have the trade deadline. We're changing the show up a little bit. Let's get started with it right away. Uh, we usually break down some games, so let's start with a game that sort of fuels this rumor a little bit more. The Los Angeles Lakers lose against the now broken down, traded away, everyone's gone, Portland Trailblazers, 105 to 107. Yeah. This team is just uh, completely in shambles right now. Yeah. Russell Westbrook did not play in this game. One of the few games he misses because of injury. Bill Orma, the athletic, had a, had a quote the other day. Sources have indicated that the Lakers no longer believe they can win at a high level with Westbrook alongside James and Davis. But prior to Tuesday, the line of thinking was that the Lakers would be unwilling to wave the white flag and admit their summer blockbuster was a failure. Instead, they would prefer to wait until the offseason when they can include a 2029 pick in a potential deal for another max contract player looking for a new home. Big Dave, how interested should other teams be with a expiring contract Russell Westbrook and a future middle schooler? Oh. That, the, that the Lakers could offer in a trade this offseason. See, knowing LeBron, that future middle schooler is probably one of his children. So he can yeah, who's the who's the youngest one? Bryce. Yeah, yeah, right. I don't He's know. By then, Bryce, be, yeah. by then it could be by then it could be Zuri. I mean, who knows what's gonna yeah, happen? Right. Then. That's a great point. That's a great point, man. But man, dude, I don't know how many teams should be interested. I guess teams like that just need a name and need somebody to put butts in the seats. You know, maybe they could go for that because I don't see him. You know, going to a team. That's already built and already knows what they want to do and what they want to be. And then adding in a guy like Russell Westbrook, who has to have everything kind of built around him and just let him do how he does. That's when he's really great. He's not great when it's structured. He's great when he's just free. He's an artist, sir. He's an artist. <laughs> he's an artist. And it's also got to be his way, too, because he's earned it. Mm -hmm. Right. He thinks he feels like he's earned it. He feels like he should be out there in crunch time, which is what he said the other night. Yeah, I, I don't see many teams making this um, making this move right short of. Yeah. A team like the the Thunder or the Rockets, a team that just wants to be bad and wants to stay bad. And <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, there's just nobody else like this that really stands out. So the Lakers are probably going to be stuck with him. But we said that about the Wizards, too. So who knows if yeah. a team is going to get desperate enough to try that. Um, we talked about it a little bit for the Mavericks. And if Jason Kidd is crazy enough to think that he can fix Russell <laughs> Russell Westbrook, I mean, he <laughs> he changed his, himself in his career. He he. He changed around, so who knows what uh, what could happen with Russell Westbrook, but it does seem like the Lakers are going to try to move on from him. There's the Lakers. Let's move on to another team in the Eastern Conference. Give me one, Big Dave. Oh, how about we talk about the Chicago Bulls just because they played tonight. Oh, they got of a course victory. they're starting Bulls. Ugh, hit them with it, man. I don't know why. What do you mean? I don't know what you're talking about. What do you mean? <laughs> Bulls? I don't know what you're talking about. But, yes, man, Chicago Bulls with that victory tonight, but – Man, the trade rumor has been going crazy because Bulls fans just want to make a trade. They just want AK Mark Hemsley to oh, do something. Oh, everybody does. They're Every like, just fan. make a trade, man. My goodness. 
so many trade scenarios in my DMs. It's out of control, seriously. And I'll be happy when this is over and they stop sending them to me. But the one that keeps coming up, uh, people kept mentioning was Kobe White. Uh, because Kobe White, they felt like he's a piece that can garner and bring back some real talent, you know, and upside and some size and something at the power forward position since Patrick Williams isn't there. Now we come out, Casey Johnson for NBC Sports Chicago has come out, said, you know what? Doesn't look like that's going to go down. Looks like Kobe White's going to be here for the long haul. He even spoke to Kobe White, who said, yeah, I pretty much think I'm going to be here <laughs> after the trade deadline. So it doesn't look like that's going to go down. Dennis Schroeder was another name that was mentioned. The Bulls did make an offer to Boston uh, for Dennis Schroeder. I don't know what it was, but it probably was, you know, a couple packs of ketchup, mild sauce. And they just like, no, nah, like we Troy don't Brown's that. contract or something like that. Exactly, exactly. What I mean, like I said, ketchup, mild sauce, and some cigarettes. <laughs> so that's what that is. Um, doesn't look like that that's going to occur. That might not go down either. So I think the Bulls just might stand pat and, you know, get something in the buyout, maybe looking at Tristan Thompson. That seems to be where we are with the Bulls. The Sacramento Kings are, are making moves. They are they are moving around. They are they're sending out players. They got Sabonis, who made his NBA debut, played pretty well for the Sacramento Kings in a win against the Minnesota Timberwolves. He went out there and got 22 points, 14 boards, five assists, five Ooh. offensive rebounds as well on that, mm. uh, and was plus four in a win for the the Sacramento Kings. Great for them. There's there's conflicting rumors that came out though. We're, we're here to talk about rumors today. Sure. Chris Mannix said that Sacramento is expected to aggressively pursue a deal to offload Harrison Barnes per sources. And Mark Stein came out and said less than 24 hours ago until the NBA trade deadline, Sacramento has been sending more frequent signals that it plans to keep Harrison Barnes rather than to trade him. So Ooh. if you're the Sacramento Kings, Big Dave, would you rather keep Harrison Barnes or do you think they should try to send him out right now? Man, you know, when I saw the game tonight, it looked like they should keep him. <laughs> it just looked like he should still be there, man. He looked like he still has a role and a fit on this team, and and he can definitely help them out. Um, what's interesting to me is about Rashawn Holmes because uh, I don't know if he's gonna be there. He didn't like play the other night. He did him. play tonight. He played eleven minutes tonight, but yeah, he may not yeah. be there. He may not be there, man. But Harrison Barnes seems like he's comfortable and is a nice fit for that team because it feels like you know they blew something up, but it feels like they're really trying to win. So if you're really trying to win, you keep Harrison Barnes. To get rid of Tyrese Halliburton and to bring in Sabonis is a win-now move, right? They're trying to win oh, now. Yeah. Matt George always says, this is not a move for the play-in. This is a move to make the playoffs, like to win mm -hmm. through the play-in and actually get to the playoffs. So if they're really trying to do that, and I don't know if that's the best for the Kings, but they got to keep Harrison Barnes. There's no way you get rid of a guy like that if you're trying to win, unless you're the Dallas Mavericks and you trade him away for almost nothing, just for cap space to try and go after Giannis. All right, give me another Eastern Conference team. Oh, the New York Knicks. Let's talk about those oh. New York Knicks, man. They have gone out and they have hired a consultant, the former president of the Minnesota Timberwolves. They hired him as a consultant. Who took Tom Thibodeau's job, by the way, as GM when he was there? So there's a little something right there. Drama. Yeah. Oh, drama. A little something right there, man. But the Knicks are in all kinds of mess right now. They made the trade for Cam Reddish. Tibbs is not a fan of Cam Reddish at all, which I knew. You know, going in, I didn't think that was going to be a good trade. And, what do you do? What do you like do if you're Cam might... Reddish in that situation, right? Like the the coach is not a fan of you. I mean, do you just keep trying your your dang your damnedest to like like prove that you can be the type of player that he wants? I mean, he won't even put you on the court. Like all you can do is just practice and do what you've been doing. You know, they got you to this level. There's nothing you can really do, or you can say, "Trade me, get me out of here." <laughs> this is a terrible place to be. So there are they there are rumors that they are looking in to making a trade. Uh, for Cam Reddish and getting him out of here. And it feels like I've read another rumor. This is from Chris Mannix, though. It said the Knicks could jump in the mix for the Raptors point guard, Gorgon Dragic. Ooh, that Dragic could, could be on the move to the Knicks. Uh, that's an interesting move. They, they already tried the Kemba Walker thing, but we'll see yeah. uh, what yeah. happens to the New York Knicks. They can ship Kimba and, and Fournier are on the table. They're two I think, free agent signings on the table. I think we put them in counted up the last couple of weeks, and we always – my my famous counted up is, all right, who's gone first, Randall or Thibodeau? And I don't know, each passing day, it seems like it's like both. <laughs> it just seems like one of the two are going to be gone. I love the, how it's your famous uh, counted up. I like that. <laughs> I, I mean, for the Knicks girlfriend. now, it's famous for them. All right, the Houston Rockets uh, have shown interest in P.J. Washington, according to – Schultz, that's an interesting rumor if they're going to be going after somebody like him. He's a guy that could really help their rebuild. But yeah. from our own Matt Moore, 
of Locked On Nuggets and the Action Network. The Houston Rockets have told teams that they have two different offers of a first-round pick for Eric Gordon. The issue is finding a team that won't send back significant salary as Houston doesn't want to add any major off the book. Houston is also looking for a pick in the teens instead of a late first-rounder for Eric Gordon. At what point are you asking for too much, <laughs> Big Dave, for Eric Gordon? Like, Just take what's given to you, I feel like, at this point for the I mean, Houston seriously. Rockets. No, seriously, man. Like these, come on, relax. Like it's Eric Gordon. Like it's all right. Just a pick. We don't want a pick in the twenties. We gotta have a pick in the teens. Right. (laughs) You know who this is. We don't want to take down. We don't take back salary for long term. Like, man, you're a team that's bad. Just take the. I mean, I feel like if they don't trade him this trade deadline, it's a big mistake because they're gonna be missing out on uh, a good season that he's having. And he could come back the next season and be injured again. He's a guy that's been injury prone in his past. So I feel like if that is true, what Matt Moore is saying, we believe him that, uh, man, they're they're missing out on an opportunity here. But it does seem like they have a couple of options available for them. And maybe they're just, you know, posturing until they finally get to the end of it and they'll 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 pull the trigger on one. Maybe, but it's a bad posture. You know, they should just go ahead <laughs> and pull that trigger off with Eric Gordon, seriously. I bet you. Sometimes it works out for me. <laughs> it's all right, man. It's all right. All right, coming up, we got more teams to get into. The rest of the NBA we'll talk about. We're rapid fire through some of them. And, of course, we'll play our favorite game on every Thursday. Count it up. Where we'll count up the most interesting, fun things about every rumor that we've seen for some of these teams coming up. So we'll get into that. But before we do, let me tell you about betonline.ag. It's the fastest and easiest way to put down some money on sports. So check it out. Betonline.net has the best odds and lines they got scores they have news they have everything you want for the nfl they have one more game left the big one that the that the Bengals are going to be in i'm really interested in that one big dave's got the Bengals in that one I do. you can go check out all the props and things on bet online you can check out everything that they have to offer out there go look at bet online it's not just football they have the nba as well they'll have all kinds of updated lines after the trade deadline so go to bet online it's bet online where the game starts All right, Big Dave, we got no time to waste on this. And you guys have no time to waste to subscribe to the Locked On NBA YouTube channel to make sure you don't miss the NBA trade deadline live show. All right, let's move on to another Eastern Conference team, Big Dave. Let's do it. Let's go with the Charlotte Hornets. I wanted to go with them since you already mentioned P.J. Washington because he is the player that is constantly being mentioned in the rumor mill, man. And this is according to uh, Jordan Schultz. They're saying that the Hornets aren't sh- aren't really shopping him, but they are willing to listen to calls. And they're saying guys like the <laughs> Heat, the Raptors, and like you mentioned, the Rockets are among the teams that are very interested in acquiring the services of P.J. Washington. If you're P.J. Washington, which one of those teams would you rather go to? Oh, if I want to have fun, I go to, I'm going with uh, the Rockets. If I want to win, I'm going with the Heat. If I want to compete, and just be in the mix, you go with the Raptors. We the Heat. Let's let's do now too because the Heat have uh, they made a trade. Casey Akpala. They have this trade now where they're allowed to um, they're allowed to trade a first round pick now. Do you have that trade in front of you? Yeah, I'm looking at it. Uh, Casey Akpala traded <laughs> to the Thunder for the 2026 second round pick and amended pick. Uh, the Heat and the Thunder also agreed to amend the protections of Miami Heat's first round pick that it is owed by OKC in 2023. That pushes it back to 2025, and it's a first round protected pick. So that means that the Heat have freed up the ability to deal its 2023 first round pick outright in any trade before Thursday or during the offseason. P.J. Washington fits this Heat team so well, I think, right? Mm -hmm. The ability to play that four, play a little bit of three as well, you know, play some defense, also, you know, hit a three. I think he fits so well. And if they can now trade that pick because of that that KZ Akpala trade, I I think that's the direction they should go in is try to go after a player like this. That's a home run for the Miami Heat if they can get that done. Yeah, he fits perfectly. He reminds me of like uh, when Josh Richardson was with the Heat, you know what I mean? It, it kind of reminds me of that. I think P.J. Washington would be that kind of fit with them, man, and that culture that they have and everything. So, yeah, I hope, I hope it doesn't work out that way because that would be bad <laughs> for my team. But yeah, true. Yeah, you're right, though. It's a good fit. You're absolutely right. The Minnesota Timberwolves have a ton of different rumors surrounding them right now. Michael Scotto from Hoops Hype had a couple of them. He said that there are executives around there that believe that there's a first-round pick trade offer could pry away Malik Beasley from Minnesota. So if there's some teams out there looking for some scoring off the bench, they can get that. The Timberwolves have also had exploratory trade talks involving Torian Prince and a second-round pick for Thad Young. Uh, mm. So the, the 
Timberwolves trying to get better there, trying to get a veteran in there, and they're trying to find a, a place for Malik Beasley. But the one I'm interested in, Darren Wolfson from KSTP in Minnesota. Minnesota is definitely trying to trade for Marcus Smart, but unless they include a first-round pick or Jaden McDaniels, in addition to Malik, Malik Beasley, most likely a deal doesn't get done. Mm. If you could get Marcus Smart and Patrick Beverly together, what kind of a backcourt does that look like for you? Oh, one, call it bump and thump. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you call that, man. That is a bad court you just don't want to mess with right there. And honestly, like, that's toughness right there. And I love Marcus Smart. I talk about it every time I watch him play. I love how he plays. I love the way he he can fool you because you can't – you don't think that he's that great offensively and he will drop 30 on you while also clamping down your best player on the other end and diving on the floor, getting the loose balls, and just being an all-around agitator, but still impacting the game from the point guard position. He is a phenomenal basketball player to me. If you're the Timberwolves, would you do this where you're including Beasley and a pick or maybe Jaden McDaniels in a deal for Marcus Smart? If you're trying to win, yeah, you do this. Because if you're trying to win, that's when you go get Marcus Smart and you make this move right there, man. That, look at, Think about what it, mean, it does for your team immediately, especially your team in Minnesota, what it does for them immediately, man. Your defense becomes way better. Your basketball IQ becomes way better. It frees up guys like uh, Anthony Edwards to go do what he wants to do and needs to do. He doesn't have to worry about guarding the best player or anything like that. Yeah, if you're trying to win, this is the move you make. I, I think it's a good move if they should do it. Man, both both of those is, is interesting to me. But yeah, I think if you're wanting to try and put a really good team in a, in a decent defense around D'Angelo Russell in the backcourt, yeah. then you have to get a guy like this, Absolutely. right? They tried with yeah. Patrick Beverly. They maybe take the next step forward with Marcus Smart. All yeah. right, give me another Eastern Conference team. Oh, uh, how about we go with that one, I was gonna save it for this, but now I'm gonna save it for now. The Nets. Oh, oh man, oh the big dog right there, man. You know the rumor. You know All what right. it is. Everybody, you know what everybody. It is. <laughs> spread out. Sit down. Spread <laughs> out, man. Sit down, guys. Get mom and dad. Bring them in. Gather them around the fire. <laughs> Look, James Harden for Ben Simmons. That's what's being talked about. I want to know your opinion. Actually, do you think that this trade should be made? Man, I think on the Nets, on, for the Nets' point of view, if James Harden is done, James Harden is done. But both of these players, just have, their temperament is, I only want to do what I only want to do, right? It's, yeah. it's, it's not yeah. necessarily always team first. It's, hey, if the coach says something bad about me, I'm going to be gone and make that my excuse because – you know, I don't want to be here anymore in Ben Simmons. It's James Harden. I'm done with this teammate, this Russell Westbrook, this Chris Paul, this Dwight Howard, this, you know, every single player, he's this Kyrie Irving. I'm done with this situation when I'm done with the situation. Yeah. I don't think Philly should do this because Philly is getting mm. themselves into a situation where you're going to pay James Harden so much money. You're going to waste mm. Joel Embiid's prime here. Uh, Daryl Morey is just infatuated with a guy that he is, uh, he's had in the past. And so I, I don't see how you do this if you're, if you're Philadelphia because of what's going to, what's going to happen after this. Now for one year, let's say it's in a vacuum, a one year deal vacuum. Like you could, you could talk yourself into, all right, we actually get James Harden because right now Ben Simmons is not playing for us. And if we don't have to include anything else really in this deal, then okay, we get James Harden for nothing right now because Ben right. Simmons is not playing for us. Man. Well, here's something from the New York post. Brooklyn has asked for Tyrese Maxey and Matisse Thibel. While Seth Curry and a first round pick were mentioned, that was mentioned in the Philadelphia Inquirer. The Sixers <laughs> reportedly offered Isaiah Joe and G League MVP Paul Reed. I love they are not I love serious. when I love when these newsbreakers <laughs> throw in like random little accolades that don't Dude, matter to anybody. Look, man, they are not serious. That that accolade just they're, told me, I was like, they're not serious. These two that. sides are so far apart, right? Like yeah, man. I, there's no I way. Don't know. I don't see a deal getting done, but we'll see if it happens. And that that shakes up the East, though. I mean, that changes things a lot. Ooh. All of a sudden, you have Ben Simmons there with the Nick, the, the Nets, and you have uh, James Harden with the Sixers. Changes yeah. things a lot. Those teams have a short time to try and figure that out, and both of those things have to be figured out in a big way on the court. Absolutely true, man. We got to see what it happens. I hope it happens, though. I really do. It, it would be crazy. All right, we have an actual trade to talk about. The Utah Jazz made a trade with the San Antonio Spurs and Portland Trailblazers. Let's go over it quickly. San Antonio gets Tomas Sadoransky and Utah's 20, 20, uh, 27 second round pick. Utah gets 
Nikhil Alexander Walker and Juancho Hernan Gomez. They send out Joe Ingles, Elijah Hughes, and a 2022 second round pick. So this upcoming draft to the Portland Trailblazers, the end of the Joe Ingles era in Utah. They get Nikhil Alexander Walker, who maybe they can package and send for somebody else in an actual wing. They get Wancho, who's kind of in a, a very poor man's Joe Ingles, I think, at this point, right? Like this is the um maybe New Zealand version of, of, of because you know how Australia and New Zealand are, are not I, necessarily. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> they don't like each other. Um, but yeah, Utah, well it, it, Utah trying to do some kind of of a move here. And uh, you can see how San Antonio, they get Tomas Sadoransky. They'll probably buy him out, but they get that second yeah. round pick. Um, and then you can see how Portland is, they get a, you know, a quick second round pick here. And Elijah Hughes is an interesting player that Mike High unlocked on NBA draft. Richard Stamen has always been in on, so they get an interesting project there. And Joe Ingles is expiring, so you kind of see how everybody sort of works in this in this deal. But for Utah, Nikhil Alexander Walker, I'm not sure he's impacting your winning right now. Yeah, yeah, it should be interesting. And Utah also blew out uh, Golden State tonight as well, too. So that was interesting. But you know, the interesting name for me in this trade is Tomas Sadoransky, obviously because he used to play for the Chicago Bulls. Right. But this dude, man, look, man, he is getting passed around like a funny cigarette. Like, he is just, dude, just all around. He's not even getting a chance to stand and stay. He just immediately is being traded. You just said it. Like, well, he'll probably get bought out. I think like, he will. It's, it's so crazy. He was like, I just had a jersey on yesterday, and I might be in street clothes by the time <laughs> this is all over. It's so crazy, man. He'll get picked up by somebody, I think. I hope all so, right. man. All right, coming up, let's get into some rapid fire. We got some rapid fire rumors, and then we'll play our favorite game. Turn it up, man on the end of today's Locked on NBA. All right, let me tell you first about Rock Auto. Rock Auto is the place where if you're trying to you're trying to count up all the different kind of things you have to do for your car. All right, I got to change this. I got to change this. I got to fix that. I got to rotate these. I got to do all this kind of stuff. RockAuto.com can help you with that. They help you save time and money while using Rock Auto. Find every single part that you need for your car or truck and you can get them delivered straight to your door. You don't have to go anywhere. You don't have to go talk to somebody at the counter who says, hey, we got to send it away for it. We got to send box tops to go get it and bring it back. You just have to go there to rockauto.com on your phone, on your tablet, on your whatever device you use. Go explore their easy to use website today. Go to rockauto.com right now. See all the parts available for your car or truck right locked on in their how did you hear about us box so they know that we sent you amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need rockauto.com. Yeah. All right, Big Dave, we're going to rapid fire through some of these. We're going to go back and forth and exchange. We're going to do like a, a, and a gift exchange, but this is with rumors. Okay. All right. The Dallas Mavericks have been rumored as a suitor for Miles Turner, even though a little while ago the, the, the Mavericks were out on Miles Turner. I would not say I would not be so out on Miles Turner if I'm the Dallas Mavericks yet. I would still look into that one. They've also inquired about Buddy Heald, and that one is interesting to me as well. Give me an Eastern Conference team. Uh, let me go with the Orlando Magic right here. Terrence Ross has been a name that's been mentioned and thrown around, and he's been called a primary target for both the Boston Celtics and the Los Angeles Lakers. And the Lakers mm. definitely could use him. <laughs> Absolutely. They, they have players that they are going to definitely send out, and I'm interested to see where some of those guys go. Yeah, absolutely. The Phoenix Suns, according to our own Matt Moore from the Lockdown Nuggets podcast, the Suns have taken calls from the Denver Nuggets, the D Detroit Pistons, the Washington Wizards, the San Antonio Spurs, and Toronto Raptors for young backup Jalen Smith. All of a sudden, everybody's interested in Jalen Smith when the first mm. year it seemed like he was a big bust and he has a top 10 pick. The Pistons offer included, included Rodney Magruder, who, is, uh, who was first included in a failed trade for Denver's Bull Bull, who is now with Boston. Uh, Jalen Smith, all of a sudden, some interest in him. So we'll see what happens with Jalen Smith, but the Phoenix Suns are accepting calls on him. Give me another team. Oh, the Detroit Pistons. I mean, they were the hottest team coming into this trade. Thing, man. Everybody wanted to talk about Jeremy Grant. Everybody wanted Jeremy Grant. The Pistons wanted too high of a price for him. I know the Bulls were definitely involved. They wanted Patrick Williams. As I've said for months now, there's no way the Bulls are trading their first ever draft pick under this new regime. And now it just feels like it's fizzling away. Teams are just kind of moving on from Jeremy Grant. And Detroit is okay with that because he still has another year. So maybe they can come back next year and do something else with him. But it doesn't look like anything is on the table anymore. We talked about Thaddeus Young before, but according to Michael Scotto, several teams, including the Minnesota Timberwolves, who we talked about, the Phoenix Suns have expressed interest in trading for Spurs forward Thaddeus Young. Thaddeus Young could actually go and help somebody. I think this is a guy, if yeah. the Phoenix Suns get their hands on him, 
that's bad news for the rest of the <laughs> for the rest of the NBA because yeah. I think this guy could actually come in and help. He's you know could be their weird backup five. The the Suns have had all these like this rotating cast of backup fives, and I think that Young could be that guy that solidifies that rotation as a big man for them. And so I'd be very wary if I'm, if I'm the rest of the league if if the you know the Suns get their hands on Thaddeus Young. Yeah, I agree. I hope it doesn't happen. I hope he gets traded, gets bought out, and comes back to the Bulls. Uh, the <laughs> Toronto Raptors. The Raptors have talked to the Hawks about acquiring uh, Danilo Gallinari. And that's according mm. to Jake Fisher from Bleacher Report. And that would be interesting. The framework of the trade would send Gorgon Dragic's contract to Atlanta in exchange for Gallinari. What is your thoughts on this one right here, my friend? Toronto taking back an extra sal- extra year of salary with Gallinari, I think, as well on that one. The the mm. Hawks getting the expiring. I would hope that the Hawks would would buy out Dragic, but he's pretty useful. If you're the you know the Dallas Mavericks have been waiting for him to be bought out, and it was only what two, two years ago that this guy was averaging almost twenty points a game on the way to the finals in the bubble for the Miami Heat. So I'm confused as to what's been happening with Dragic this year, and I hope he gets bought out and he's with the Mavs. But uh, this would be a slam dunk for the Hawks if they made this deal. Yeah, I agree with you. Yeah, it'd be an awesome move. <laughs> like, seriously. couple of rumors for the Denver Nuggets, according to Mike Singer of the Denver Post. The Nuggets are in search of a perimeter defender. Cool. Uh, Jake Fisher also reported that Jamichael Green and Compazzo, uh, Facundo Compazzo, who has now fallen completely out of the rotation, are considered available in trades. So those guys are both available. We'll see what the Denver Nuggets do. Our guys on Lockdown Nuggets do a good job of covering them. Give me another Eastern Conference team. Oh, we just talked about how about the Atlanta Hawks? Uh, Mm. We just talked about Gallinari. And the other player that has also been mentioned in the past few weeks is John Collins. But according to Sarah Spencer at the Atlanta Journal-Constitution, as of Tuesday night, there was about 90% chance that the Hawks would simply stand pat and not do anything. Mm. That that feels like a big mistake to me. This team, I feel like, I'm not sure this is just a keep a powder dry team right now. If I'm the Atlanta Hawks, they're 26 and 28. They were just in the Eastern Conference Finals. I know they're seven and three in their last 10 games and they've played well recently, but you're still two games under 500 and you've been seven and three in your last 10. I mean, I think this team needs a big trade. They need to move some pieces around. And I think it's a mistake if they just stand pat like that. I think it's interesting because it's the fact that they have all these pieces and what's the big piece that they need? I guess they're just saying like, well, like you said, we're seven and three. We did this last year when we came on late. And we made it all the way to the Eastern Conference Finals. Maybe we could do that again this year with what we got. If I'm their fans, I would be I would be hoping for a big trade too. <laughs> Just give me somebody. <laughs> give me somebody interesting. Uh, last one, last one, rapid fire for me. Golden State Warriors. They don't have any trade rumors. There's nothing going on around this team as far as trade rumors go. But James Wiseman is now participating in contact three-on-three scrimmages, his first contact work in 10 months. So hopefully they're getting him back. That's an addition in and of itself to get him back. Mm. And Clay Thompson. Um, is also his minutes restriction are being is being lifted now to 30 minutes, which is an interesting thing for him. Now they're lifting that. That's always a good sign when a team raises that level. And the last one here, when Clay Thompson was asked what the Warriors needed the trade deadline, he said, "Quote, maybe a new washing machine." Wow. Go straight up. Go straight up, <laughs> Jackie Moon on it, and trade a washing machine for somebody. <laughs> Gotta love Clay well Thompson. Done. You have well any more done. rapid fire teams, or are we moving to count? Yeah, up? got two. Got two more for you. Right, uh, you got them. the Bucks. You got the Milwaukee Bucks because it was reported that the Bucks and the Celtics reportedly discussed the Schroeder Dante Divincenzo swap. Mmm. Yeah. Bucks maybe yeah. Bucks might be getting desperate here. Yeah, man. Like, but I don't see why. Like, they're a great team. Like, they they they're set in my head. They're, they're good. They're on, I don't know why they would have to make this move right here. I don't, I don't know why. Maybe there's something going on that I'm not seeing, but it just feels like. They I think they need they another need. center and a guard, but I don't think they need that center in the playoffs. I mean, they Are just they... got rid of Boogie. They just had to send. It was like, no, nah, we're good. Like, No, they need a center that can defend anything. <laughs> oh, fair enough. Oh, yeah, everybody could use one of those. You're right. <laughs> and Cleveland Cavaliers, I'm not going to speak on them because they've already done what they needed to do and yeah, they made they... their trade, man, and getting Karis LeVert and they kicked the crap uh, out, of, out of, who did they play tonight? Oh, the, the Spurs. Thank you very much. Yes, my man DeJounte Murray. <laughs> it was a All battle of the All-Stars. Darius Garland yeah. and DeJounte Murray going at it. Yeah, but so. they beat the crap out of them. <laughs> All right, there you go. Let's move on to our favorite game every single week. Count it up, count it up, count it up. Count it. count it up where we count out the most interesting, fun, funny things in the NBA. We're doing it with rumors this time. The Portland Trailblazers have 
I mean, they're selling house. They're sending out, you know, Covington, Norman Powell, CJ McCollum is now gone. Everybody seems to be sending out of, of Portland. Count it up. Count it up. If you're Damian Lillard, what's your confidence level? This team will be a playoff contender again while you're still under contract. Ooh, my that they're contending level. for a playoff spot, not just a play in spot, but an actual right. playoff spot. So that means top six. Top oh, six. If I'm him and yeah. knowing how he is, he's 100%. That, he's that he's going, feeling really good about it. Yeah. I mean, yeah, because that's just how he was wired. That's kind of how he's operating. Listen to what he said after when it came out, his statement that he made. Like, no, I love it here. I want to win here. Like, that's his focus. He still believes that's a possibility. So, of course, he's going to be be like, yeah, my mindset is 100%. We're going to be in that top six. No doubt. I've said I believe a lot of things, and I may not have believed some of them. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've been – hey, man, you believe the – This team currently football? is Damian Lillard, Eric Bledsoe, Joe Ingles, Josh Hart, Nurkic, Anthony Simons, Justice Winslow – I, I don't feel confident. Me pers- nice. <laughs> me, sure. Me personally, I don't feel confident in this team at all getting back there. But you have three more years after this one. In three years, you think this team is going to be back in the top six? I don't see it. I don't see this team at all. So count it up. My level is zero. <laughs> I like how you paused on that one. That's cold blooded. Like, I don't. One, th- th- you get three years now to rebuild this and put yourself back in a situation where Damian Lillard is getting you to top six. I don't feel it. All right, give me. I think it's the Anthony Simons. I think that's what's giving him the confidence, honestly. Give me a count it up. Oh, the chance that the Heat trade that pick before Thursday. Count it up. Who? This is 100%, right? There's no way that this Miami Heat team looks at their roster right now and says, all right, we can stand pat. And they make that move where they can trade that pick now and don't have something in their sights going forward or a bunch of other things in their sights. They're 100% trading this pick. I say it's 50. <laughs> I say it's 50%. Hedging. hedging. I'm, I'm, I'm hedging. Yes, yes, I am. Thank you very much. Oh, um, because <laughs> Pat Riley, man, is just that kind of guy. You never know. Like, I cannot just go all in thinking I know exactly what he's going to do. You never know what he's going to do. And then in the offseason, he makes the trade and winds up with just a great player that yeah, out of nowhere that nobody has ever seen play basketball before. He, he waits in the Riley's wings like, for the right time. Right. He's like, he's like, damn Bruce him Wayne. and his patience. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He's like Bruce Wayne, man. Just going to the depth, like, yeah, I saw this guy playing in an alley. He was averaging like 65 <laughs> against the people. Who, what, what, Does that why make are Eric Spolster Robin? Yeah. <laughs> he's Nightwing. He ain't Robin. That dude is Ooh. Nightwing, bro. That he got named to a top 15 coach of all time. You're right. He's Nightwing. Yeah. 100%. He's Nightwing, yeah. He, he, took da- he took down Slade all by himself. Yes, All right. Did. Oh, yes, let's, sir. <laughs> let's go. The Los Angeles Clippers, according to Dan Wojcicki of the LA Times, are expected to make one of their centers available and trade one of these three centers that they have, and it may be Zubots in a bigger mm. deal. Count it up. What kind of bigger deal would it have to be for you to include Zubots? What are you improving on this roster for the Clippers? Let's just we can just name a position or something because right now it seems like they have kind of everything except for point guard. Yeah, and I think that's the answer right there. Like, if you're going to include my man Zubak Shakur. You got to improve that. You got you got to go ahead. You got to get that point guard set up, man. But honestly, I wonder how much is this hedged on Kawhi and Paul George this season? Not not going forward, but actually for this season and, and trying to uh, get them back and make a playoff push. I think a lot of that is hedged on that. But regardless of if they get there or not, yeah, you're right. That point guard position, man, that's, that's kind of where it's at. That seems to be the, the position. I, that's to me the position. So it counted. Oh, count it up. Are you improving the one, the two, the three, the four, the five? You're improving the one, right? You got to improve that point guard spot. That's the only one because they have so many wings. Like They have all the wings that you could ever want. So it's either center or point guard, and I think it has to be the point guard. Mm. I want to talk about the Wizards. (laughs) (laughs) You and no one else, but all right. Let's talk. Because I have a counted up question. We have a counted up question for the Wizards, man. Because, like, you, you've seen all the guys that's been mentioned. You know, Kuzma's been mentioned. Montrez Harrell, Spencer Dinwiddie, all these guys. Bradley Bill having a season-ending surgery. Mm-hmm. So, I want to know, count it up. Count how it up. much, how big should they remodel this team? Like, mm. is this a full remodel? Are we talking one bedroom? We're talking two bedroom? We're talking mm. just tearing it all down? How big of a task? Should they take undertake 
for this. That's team, a real. So. That's a real smart analogy, Big Dave. I'm, I'm glad you didn't go with the bomb <laughs> analogy we were talking about. Before. <laughs> <laughs> this this is this is tear it down to the studs and, wow. and tear it down to the Brad Beal and start the heck over, right? Wow. I think this team. How many times can Tommy Shepard just keep retooling? You know, around Bradley Beal and just keep moving around the edges. Like this team needs something drastic. And mm. are they to like get butts in seats and you know to keep people around just by being okay? Like the fans were really into when this team was good at the beginning of the season. We yeah. saw it on our <laughs> numbers for our wizard shows. And yeah. I think this team, they've got some young pieces. They can start, I mean, they could start selling off some of these young pieces, you know, Rui, even Thomas Bryant, Denny. Corey Kispert and just try, just try, see what you can get for some of these guys and package it for just one other good guy, right? Like just send them off for somebody like that. Start with that person and Bradley Beal and start over, tear down to the studs. I'm going to agree with you. I, I mm. think they can just take it all down and tear it right on down, man. Get everybody shipped out of there. Uh, of course, of course, I'm going to use this opportunity to talk about my main man, Daniel Gafford and how he should be traded and sent somewhere else. Because that's my master plan for him is he's going to have a career similar to Tyson Chandler's. He's going to get traded to a bunch of places, and he's going to be awesome defensively and mess around and win the title. Go to where Tyson Chandler got a title. Come to the Dallas Mavericks. Oh, my God. He would be – y'all would love him. Y'all would, would be love the best. Daniel Gafford. I'm, we've man. been that's in on that cool. for sure. Yeah, I'm with that. Y'all still – but, yeah, tear that down in tear Washington, down. man. It was fun at the beginning, but, oh, my God, that house – it, it, it needs work. <laughs> the New Orleans Pelicans have made their deals now. They acquired CJ McCollum, but how many days earlier will Zion Williamson come back now that they have CJ McCollum? Because you know Zion Williams has just been hanging out. He's just been doing whatever. He's been away from the team. He's been not with the team. He's been with right. the team. He's been traveling right. with the team. He's been not traveling with the team. How much more right. does this convince you? So, like, if you're saying, all right, I got to take vacation days, my PTO days, how right. many yeah. less days is he taking now that they have CJ McCollum back? I think he takes three less days because let's keep it real. <laughs> let's keep it real. Like he probably had his, you know, Mardi Gras plans all ready to go. And then he heard about this trade and said, what? <laughs> it was like, what? What do you mean? Oh my goodness. Hold on guys. All right. We got to, we got to talk. We got to talk. I can't do the seven day anymore. We got to go four. We got to do the four day hanging out uh, in Mardi Gras, man, down New Orleans. So I think, man, I really want to see him play. Like, cause Zion Williamson is just an incredible basketball player when he's on the floor. And being with C.J. McCullough, I think that's a nice little pairing right there. And with Brandon Ingram, who's always the forgotten man in any time we're talking about New Orleans, man. But, yeah, man. Three. Yeah, his feelings don't matter. Me. I guess I'm going to talk about He's, right. He's quiet. His, there. his feelings right. don't matter. Do you have any more? Oh, uh, I have one because we haven't talked about this team. But the Indiana Pacers. Oh. We have not discussed the Indiana Pacers, man. Count it up. The level of love for Tyrese Halliburton in Indiana. What's the level going to be? Oh, count it up. Count it up. Give me what's the what's the higher than 10? If we're going if we're going 1 to 10, right? It's it's an it's an insane amount. Oh man. Oh my Yeah, I, I agree, man. They they're going to love him. I, my question to you is because you you would know this kind of firsthand about how how is he going to play under Carlisle? Like, because you've told me, like, Carlisle and, and guys who stand up to him, and, and specifically point guards, uh, he's had his issues with. So what's that – what do you think that's going to be like for a young point guard under Carlisle? He's, he's – Rick Carlisle has been really tough on point guards in the past. But I, I think Tyrese is going to be that team player like a Jalen Brunson that has worked well under Carlisle. Brunson was one of the few rookies that actually got some play under him. And I think Rick Carlisle is going into the situation knowing – all right, I got I to gotta play this guy a certain way, and I got to make sure that I coach this guy a certain way and uh, and and get the best out of him because this is a, a full-on rebuild, right? Like he's uh, – Rick Carlisle was really, you know, salty with some point guards when they weren't in a rebuild, right? And it didn't work out, and there was expectations. There's no expectations now for the Pacers. Yeah, I hear you on that, man. Okay, that would be interesting to watch, man. I hope it doesn't work out too well because, once again, be- <laughs> everything's about the Bulls. All right, last one here, the Memphis Grizzlies. Quiet on the Western front for the for the Memphis Grizzlies. It is can they trade? You know, can they trade uh, Kyle Anderson? Are they moving on from from him since they don't think they can resign him possibly? But that seems to be it for the Grizzlies. But Count it up. if they don't make a move, how confident are you that this current roster can win a first round playoff series? 
oh man, dude, what's higher than 10? Like you just asked. Oh my goodness. Again, okay, so they're going to be playing the, the Jazz, the Mavericks, the Nuggets, the Timberwolves, the Clippers, maybe the Lakers even. You don't, you're, win, you're win, 100% win. confident about any, any of those. Win, 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 win. They are absolutely winning any of those wow. teams that you just named. They're winning. That I all my faith is in John Morant and the Memphis Grizzlies, man. Have you watched them? Man, dude, they're insane. Like I've watched them lose to the Mavs twice this year. Well, hey, get that one in. I appreciate that. But yes, but also the Mavs in their first rounds, man. Yeah. It's not, yeah, I don't know, but we'll see. But I think I, all my faith is in Memphis, man. Go ahead and, and getting a first round victory against any team that you just mentioned, man, including your beloved Mavericks. Please don't hate me. They are just as far away from the two seed as they are from the four seed. They are they are mm. comfortably in that number three slot in yeah, the Western chilling. Conference, which is good. Chilling, man. There you go. We did it. 30 teams. We talked about all 30 teams. We gave a trade rumor for every single one of them. <laughs> Enjoy the trade deadline live show today, guys. Thanks so much for listening to Locked On NBA. Boom. Thank you.